Hi folks, uh, I'm Ajay Nair, the General Manager for AWS Lambda and AWS AppRunner. Welcome to Serverless Innovation Days, and we're here today to talk about modernizing with AWS Serverless with uh, Brittany Doncaster, a distinguished engineer at Delta Airlines. Welcome, Brittany. Thank you for spending time with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, Brittany and I have spent some time together at uh, AWS. Way back. Way back. <laughs> it's not data cells, right? Uh, and uh, it looks like you're on to great things with Delta right now. So Delta Airlines. So tell me more about what your journey has been. You know, Tell me a little bit about your role and how that's plugging into uh, Delta Airlines' move to the cloud. So as a distinguished engineer at Delta, my role is to kind of help guide us on this cloud journey that we are on right now. We are about two and a half years into a multi-year journey to get ourselves into AWS, into the cloud, and to start showing the fruits of all of that labor um, with the objectives of our cloud migration, which come down to, for us, speed to market, developer productivity, cost savings, resiliency, and then developer satisfaction. And those are really kind of the main drivers that have taken us into the cloud. Got it. And I imagine this was, I understand this is a reasonably recent shift for, for the company, right? Like yes. a major trigger recently for you to yeah, kind of consider that? Very yeah, very recently. So in about 2020, the beginning of 2020, we started saying, you know, we should really start putting some major footprint into the cloud and start thinking about what our cloud strategy is going to be. And that was around February 2020. Right. Mm -hmm. Major shift yeah. in the world. And then March, <laughs> something something happened in March. Yeah. Um, and in March, as you know, um, the pandemic hit and it actually had a really really tough impact on the airline industry and, uh, and on our business. And so we kind of had to put our airline to sleep and it became even more apparent that we really needed to be able to scale down as well as scale up. Um, we went from the highest of highs in 2019 to kind of the lowest of lows in 2020. Um, but we realized that by getting to the cloud, we could flex with our business a lot more easily. And so we started this multi-year journey in 2020 to start to make use of the cloud. Got it. I know it's it's fascinating because that trigger you called out about, you know, agility, cost efficiency, elasticity is such a, a common trigger for many of our largest customers to go through that journey. And it's sort of a industry impacting thing like the pandemic, I would imagine would have been sort of quite the push for it, right? So, um, but those are also the values I've also heard when people are going through brand new migrations, AWS serverless plays a bigger part in that too. So I'm curious sort of, was this a wholesale uh, big move or modernization played a part in it? So walk me through how, how you all were thinking about it. Yeah, so a, a lot like many AWS customers mm -hmm. and companies that are making a large migration to the cloud, you can't modernize everything, right? <laughs> Everybody wishes they could, <laughs> right. but it's just not practical. Yeah. So as we looked at our application landscape, we kind of divided it up into different categories. And so we have we have some lift and shift, essentially. We have some that are um, kind of getting replatformed. And then we have a, a subset, about 15 to 20% of our application workloads that are actually going into a modernized, re-architected kind of, um, we call it a disposition Got it. At, okay. at Delta. And so for those, we are serverless first within Delta, and <laughs> which I'm sure you love to see. Um, and we really feel that serverless is going to be the driver for those modernized workloads that are gonna help us get that speed, the developer satisfaction, as well as reducing the costs for those applications and also helping us to be even more resilient because we chose that 15 to 20% as our most critical workloads. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, you know, I would love to get into the specifics of you know, a, a particular app that you picked up, but I can tell you um, the payoff that we, the broader set of customers seeing, I think uh, Deloitte had put a study out about, I think it's about 403% ROI over five years on the investment you get in there. Uh, it's about a 35 to 40% increase in speed of delivery. So I'm optimistic that at the end of this journey, we'll be back here in some other forum talking about the specific gains that you see over there. But I'm, I'm excited to hear more about 
the app that you've chosen to move forward. So is is there a particular hero app that we can kind of get into that some of the folks would be interested to hear about? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's so many yeah. to talk about. I think um, one of the most interesting things about Delta that I've learned in coming to Delta is the complexity of the business. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so much intricacies behind the business that I never really realized when I was just this kind of passenger passenger getting on a plane and I didn't realize how many things went into effect in this kind of really, um, it's, it's almost like a very, uh, a very choreographed dance, you know, that happens to get that plane out safe, reliable on time. Um, but I think something that is really tangible to, your customers and our customers that has gone to serverless is the new Wi-Fi portal. So, you know, Ed Bastian, our CEO, back in January announced that free Wi-Fi is here and we're rolling it out on all of our Delta um, Happy customer. Happy customer. (laughs) Glad to hear it. And that Wi-Fi portal has actually been built on Lambda. Um, and even happier API (laughs) Gateway. Um, And API Gateway. And so, um, you know, I think Folks who are flying Delta can actually see the application of these serverless technologies and something that's you know customer facing to them. Got it. And I would imagine like um, the fact that it can flex as your fleet grows and otherwise is a bigger factor. The, the the ability for you to deploy them onto new footprints will be changing rapidly as well. Exactly. You know, we don't have to sit there and plan out okay, you're going to roll it out. You've got however many more antennas that you're putting on however many more planes. We don't have to do that kind of capacity planning and things like that. The the application and the portal itself can scale to meet the demands. And much in the same way, a lot of the other applications that aren't as customer facing can use Lambda and serverless technologies from AWS to also meet that kind of scale. You know, the airline business, the airline industry is very, it's a very unpredictable kind of business. There's things that can happen that are outside of your control. You know, it could be a weather event or whatever. And the ability for our applications, our most critical applications, to be able to react to that seamlessly is one of the big drivers for us in going serverless first. Got it. Now, that, and that's gratifying to hear. In fact, actually, I want to tie back to one of the things you called out earlier about uh, it playing a part in your developer productivity as well, right? Like so. One of the patterns we've seen with many of the customers who do go serverless first and have that initial success is then taking that pattern and then applying it to make it available to more of their modernization journey as well. And I'm, so I'm interested how uh, Delta Airlines chose to tackle that problem and sort of how you have been helping with that. Too. Yeah, so we actually have an internal site that has the different architectures that are kind of um, able to be stamped out for folks, essentially. And we've given folks the the Git repositories with all the code that they can just take it and make it their own. Um, But then we also have a bunch of CDK converts um, that have grown up and a little formation happening. I I, I can hear the CDK crowd going. Yeah, they're probably like, you know, screaming (laughs) like, yeah. Um, So we, we actually, we went to reInvent last year and some of the folks on our Cloud Center of Expertise team went to a CDK workshop and they came back and they said, we got to build a library for folks to be able to, you know, spin up a Lambda function, spin up an API gateway, um, plug all of these things together in a way that meets our infrastructure and security requirements out of the box. Because we we work in a very secure environment as well. And so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of guardrails in place within our AWS environment. And so kind of learning those when you're just starting out is a little difficult and learning how to work within that environment. Um, And so the more we can provide folks these patterns to get started out of the box and within the guardrails, it makes it that much quicker for them. So we started out with originally with these kinds of patterns that were just cloud formation templates, et cetera, and we're slowly redoing all of those patterns to be CDK. There's there's actually another um, serverless first customer in uh, in Liberty Mutual who has also picked CDK. So they have put out this pattern called CDK patterns. Uh, I think that most of that is public, and one of the heroes talks quite a bit about it. So 
maybe that's a place where yeah. you know, the community can help you yeah, accelerate exactly. and kind of push adoption a little bit more too. That's fascinating. The pattern you called out is really interesting because it's the same thing we see with many of our larger customers. They pick that, they find something like CDK or otherwise. There's shared templates, uh, you know, common pipelines, potentially even going across, uh, you know, uh, a serverless environment or a, a traditional container-based environment, et cetera, to go and do so. Yep. And then that becomes the seed of, you know, organizational uh, development as it goes over there. So I'm glad that part has sort of been working out and hopefully more and more of that 15 to 20% becomes uh, sort of pushes down the serverless journey, right? So, Well, yeah, and you know, that 15 to 20% is just of the current landscape, right? right. We're also serverless first for all new development, like right. Wi-Fi portal, yeah. for instance, was actually brand new That's development. Right. Um, so yeah, I think the more we get into the cloud um, and the more we start doing new development, we're just going to see it see it grow. See it get bigger. Got it. So how are we helping you and how can we be helping you in that journey as you move forward? You called out some of these new apps you're building. So talk to me a little bit about what sits in the future and what part AWS can play in that. You know, I think some of the biggest parts are making the multi-region architectures mm -hmm. easier. Multi-region, multi-account, right? So we really set up our environments in the AWS best practices multi-region, multi-account. Um, but some of those things are a little bit hard to, to work with um, from, from our standpoint, right? And so I think kind of the more you guys can make that resiliency story even easier from a customer standpoint, um, I, I think it'd be no, it's uh, <laughs> it's some of our biggest pain points. I, I know. Yeah. I, I appreciate you sharing that with me. So I will say, you know, philosophy wise, we've always talked about uh, Lambda being a regional service. And in fact, you will remember back in our hey back days of AWS, <laughs> we used to think about, oh, my God, Lambda as a regional service is helping you deal with AZ issues and therefore it's abstracted. Right. So in some ways, it's almost gratifying that that unit has now moved to being a region and being a global presence as right. it stands. Um, as AWS, you know, we've definitely been seeing that similar trend as you called out as, you know, especially with companies with large global footprints. Uh, and we have primitives like SQS and EventBridge all who have created sort of these globally replicated ideas. So it, it certainly is something we'd love to work with you to make Lambda and other serverless primitives kind of obey that same construct too uh, as yeah. it goes over there. Um, governance, of course, is a, is a bigger one as well, right? Accounts and, and all those things. and. Uh, I think AWS is passionately hoping to make sure that that works and, and there's committed areas over there. Dates will not be shared in public. We will, we will, we will <laughs> I don't know. About I could here. probably like arm wrestle you to get that's them in. True. That's, that's true. Yes. <laughs> that's part of the blooper reel, folks. That's right. right. So we can talk about that. Um, no, I, that, that looks really cool. So uh, if you look forward, like in the next four to five years, how do you, do you see, um, and you look at Delta's sort of cloud journey as you go along, what are you most sort of optimistic about uh, in the shifts that you're seeing over there and kind of the shifts that you're seeing even internally in your development team, right? Because I would imagine it's a major cultural change as you're moving your team to think about, you know, almost being cloud first, not just cloud first, but serverless first from what has been a more traditional environment, uh, exactly especially right. in a, when we're coming out of the pandemic, right? It's a huge shift and a huge part of our transformation. You know, you don't get, productivity and speed to market and things like that just from going to the cloud. Mm -hmm. It's a huge enabler, but yeah. you also have to shift your your culture, your way of working, the responsibilities of the developers. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm most excited once we are really, you know, the cloud journey is, I'll say, behind us, meaning we're in the cloud yeah. and we're making use of it. I'm most excited to see what amazing, innovative things we're going to come out with um, when freed up from having to provision infrastructure or worry about the things that we used to have to worry about. Yeah. So anyway, thank you so much, Brittany, for taking time with us today. I, I really enjoyed learning more about uh, Delta that. Airlines journey through the cloud and with AWS serverless. And I hope uh, you all did too. Uh, thank you so much for joining us in today's session. I hope that was educational. Uh, enjoy the rest of uh, serverless innovation day and uh, thank you.